All right, now let's check out sequencer mode in scales. So this is accessed in the config menu here. Uh, you actually use the same button as dual quantizer mode. You just press it a second time. It starts flashing to indicate you're in sequencer mode. So because this is an out B option, the sequence is going to be sent from out B and we just have the second Dixie connected now. Um, so you can exit the config menu and uh, now we're in sequencer mode and while in this mode the icons between the buttons tell us the new functionality of these buttons. You have rest and tie for root and interval and play and record for uh, save and load. Learn and config are now octave down and octave up. To record a sequence, we're going to hit the record button. It starts flashing to show that it's ready to receive notes. And our selected scale shows up in yellow, so we know uh, if we make a sequence, it will be within that selected scale. So we can just tap in a series of notes, put in some rests, put in some ties, go up an octave, go down an octave, and hit play when you're ready to hear it. Uh, right, it's not playing because we don't have a clock connected yet, so I'm going to use Dixie 1. I'll take the square output into the trigger input. So we got a sequence going, and I can control the rate using the Dixie. So if I hit record, I can actually overwrite some notes within that sequence. So let's put in a couple really high notes. And so if I really like that sequence, I can hold the save button here and I can save that to a slot. So you can uh, you have the same number of slots for sequences as you do for uh, for your save scales. And so you can do the same with loading uh, your sequences. So I had a, a basic one I recorded earlier. And you just press the load button to exit that. So our sequence is playing along there. Now another thing that's changed within sequencer mode is the shift input uh, now acts as a reset. So if we connect the gate output from planner to the shift input, I can uh, reset the sequence uh, by sending a gate there. And so you can also stop the sequence uh, by pressing play. If you stop it by pressing play and then record something, it uh, clears the previous sequence and creates a new sequence. So pressing play to stop clears the sequence, pressing record to stop lets you change that sequence. Now because the shift input is working as a reset, uh, we don't have access to all the shift features that we do in other quantizer modes, but we can still adjust the root note. So if I uh, change the root note, it will transpose the sequence. Also, like in the other quantization modes, the uh, trigger modes have an impact on how scales behave. So right now, neither of the trigger modes are selected. So the so scales is passing the trigger input to the trigger output. Uh, if we 
turn on B trig and stop the sequence, uh, scale stops outputting triggers. So uh, in B trig mode, scales uh, will only send triggers while the sequence is playing. So if we deactivate that, we can hear the triggers are still being passed. Now with and uh, you'll notice now that I've selected A trig, it deactivated B trig. So the trigger modes cannot be combined in sequencer mode either. So to demonstrate A trig, uh, I'm going to take the X output from planar. And the reason for that is because A trig advances when it uh, re when the pitch changes. So if we connect uh, to the pitch input, of course the sequence isn't playing anymore. Let's load that more complex sequence. So you can see the sequence is only advancing now uh, when I change the pitch. And this can actually be done without a clock input. So when scales detects a change at the pitch input, it outputs triggers. Whereas if you have the clock connected, it needs to detect a change as well as receive a trigger to output a trigger. So yeah, that, that gives you some pretty interesting options for getting different, uh, different kinds of rhythms going. Now, while you are using the sequencer output, you still have out A available. So now I have out A connected to that first Dixie. Uh, so I'm going to use this as an oscillator again. And uh, so you might be wondering what I'm going to use for my clock source. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take function 4 from Quadra and plug that into the trigger input. So now we've got uh, the sequence playing and I can bring up the first Dixie on my VCA here. And I'm using uh, the X output from Planar to control the pitch input. So right now we don't have a trigger mode selected, so if I press uh, play to stop, it's going to just keep sending the triggers from the input to the output. If we go into B mode, uh, it'll stop if the sequencer is stopped, and resume if uh, the sequencer is playing. If we go into A trig mode, it'll only output triggers if the pitch changes and it receives a clock uh, trigger at the input. So it's advancing the sequence and it's also quantizing notes and outputting triggers. Uh, if we don't have a trigger input connected, uh, these triggers are not going to conform to any clock signal so you can get you can get uh, more of a variety of rhythms. <laughs> 